When rendering in Maya, we have the ability to segment our output images with render layers and render passes. In this example, we'll be using render passes with pass contribution maps to generate several images. Then we'll combine the images together in a quick composition to verify the results. I want to have the sky, landing pad, and spaceship be isolated from each other, so we're going to generate three pass contribution maps. And we'll go ahead and we'll just start making a relationship between the geometry in the scene and these newly generated pass contribution maps. So we'll grab our ship and then obviously we'll finish off with our landing pad. So now that we have our pass contribution maps set up, let's go ahead and look at passes. Passes inside of Maya are very powerful. They're extracted during render time, so they have very little effect on the overall speed of your render, and we can choose from a list of 50 different passes. Now I've gone ahead and already set some passes up in my scene, so we're going to calculate it out an ambient occlusion pass, a beauty pass for the sky, a beauty pass for the landing pad, and then for the spaceship, we're going to break it down into diffuse, indirect, matte, shadow, and specular. On this cloud beauty pass, I want to change one of the options. I'm going to disable the holdout. And what this means is Maya is actually going to be calculating the pixels behind the ship and behind the landing pad on that beauty pass for the background. So if we want to move those foreground elements around in post, we'll have the flexibility to do that because those pixels will be there. So let's go ahead and add these passes in and start making a relationship between these passes and the pass contribution map. So we'll go ahead and for the ship and tell it that we want to have all these passes calculated out for everything on that ship contribution map. Then we'll go over to the landing pad and we're just going to calculate a beauty pass for the objects that have been assigned to the pass contribution pass for the landing pad. Then obviously we'll finish off with the sky and we'll just shove the cloud beauty into that one. Notice that I did not add the ambient occlusion pass to any of my contribution maps. So what this means is Maya is going to be calculating the ambient occlusion pass for everything that lives on this render layer. In this example, it's the master render layer. So the ship and the landing pad will both be included in that ambient occlusion pass automatically. So with that done, we can go ahead and calculate out a render. This will take Maya just a few seconds to, to do it. And what Maya is doing is it's doing the primary buffer, and then it's extracting all of these passes and the pass contribution maps from that primary buffer and saving those images out to disk for us. So we'll go ahead and we'll just view one of these really quick. We'll grab, let's grab the pad beauty and kind of pull this guy up here and pull it over, pump the gamma here. So you can see that the pad beauty has calculated um, the information for all of the objects that we assigned to that pass contribution pass. And in this example, it was just the landing pad. So with that done, let's go ahead and start looking at how we can start to composite these images together inside of the Hypershade window. Let's move up to the Rendering tab and you'll see that we have access to all of the render passes and render layers that we've stored to disk. We'll be using these with Utility Nodes in Maya to do some basic compositing. In my Favorites folder, I've defined a few Utility Nodes that I know I want to use and the first one that we're going to look at is Render Target. Really what render target is, is it's an output node that's visible inside of my render view. So if we go ahead and we pipe into that a beauty pass, we switch our display to render target, notice that it's locked. So what the lock means is I'm going to be working with the images on disk as opposed to recalculating them. So everything's going to be really fast because all we're really doing is compositing together images off of disk. When I click the render button, what happens is I get the product of this render target, which in this case is something really simple. It's just the output of that beauty pass. So let's build up something a little bit more complicated. We'll use a layered texture to start to combine together all these different subpasses of the spaceship to get back to the beauty pass of that spaceship. So the first thing that we want to do is go ahead and put the indirect color in there. Then we'll put our shadow pass down. Then we'll go ahead and we'll lay down our specular pass. And then we'll finish off with the diffuse. So our diffuse has layered on top of that specular. That's an add operator. Then our shadow pass comes in. That's a subtraction operator. And then finally, we want to re-add in that indirect illumination. So we'll go back to an add operator. And we can call this something a little bit more meaningful, like, I don't know, ship comp. All right, so now we've got the ship comp. And what we want to do is get another render target. And we'll just call this one render target ship. We'll pipe in this composite into that render target. We can just go ahead and graph that. So you can see, here's our render layer. Extracted from our render layer are all these different render passes. They've been recombined back together with this layer texture node and fed into this render target called render target ship. So let's go ahead and display that. Hit the render button and you can see in a matter of a few seconds we've gone ahead and rebuilt that back up into a beauty pass. So obviously what we want to do is we want to layer the ship on top of the landing pad and have that layered on top of the sky. So again, we'll just grab another layered texture. We'll drag and drop that one out. 
we'll throw into this layered texture our ship. And let's just make sure we have an alpha channel thrown into that guy also. And then we'll go and we'll drag and drop in our pad beauty. And again, we want to make sure that we have an alpha channel for that over operator on the pad beauty. And we'll finish off with the cloud. So we have cloud, pad, ship comp. And just for fun, we'll go ahead and we'll throw in our ambient occlusion on the very top of that guy. And we'll switch that over to a multiply. So we'll take the output of this and we'll create one final render target. Let's go ahead and call this one render target done. And we'll make that connection onto that guy. We'll switch our display of our viewer to render target done. And just like that, we now have finished this off. So at any time, if I want to start adding in some color correction nodes, I have the ability to use utility nodes inside of Maya to do that. So let's just go ahead and grab the uh, remap HSV node. And on the way to this, what we're going to do is we're going to desaturate that ship a little bit. So we'll go ahead and we'll put the ship into that guy. And we'll go back to this layered texture. We'll find our ship comp and we'll put that into the color for that. So we've kind of added in a little color correction node or a, a HSV node onto this. And for fun, we'll go ahead and we'll just IPR render this whole thing. It goes through and it renders it really quite quickly. And at any time I can go in here and I can just start to say, you know what, I want to desaturate that ship. And there comes the desaturation of that ship. Or I could jump back up to the layer texture node for this and say, you know what, I don't want that much ambient occlusion in there. I can start to pull that ambient occlusion out. So that is just a quick example of how we can do rendering inside of Maya using segmentation to isolate objects into separate passes and then using the compositing operation and functionality of render targets to recombine that back together to verify that everything works the way we want it to before it goes further downstream in the pipeline to post or finishing.